Good morning, everyone. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones, please. It's 9 o'clock a.m., and I'd like to call the July 2nd, 2014 City Council meeting to order. Let the record reflect that all council members and city officials are present. Just a reminder for the viewing audience, the July and August council meetings will vary slightly from our regular schedule. The new dates will be July 2nd, July 9th, August 13th, and August 20th. We will return to the regular schedule beginning in September. Please stand for the invocation and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Heavenly Father, as we approach this celebration of Independence Day, we thank you for your privileges of living in a country where we enjoy the many freedoms provided by our founding fathers in their wisdom, the freedom to assemble, and to speak our minds without fear of retribution. Thou who art the perfection of love and harmony and beauty, the Lord of heaven and earth, open our hearts that we may hear thy voice, which constantly comes from within. Disclose to us thy divine light and hidden in our souls that we may know and understand life better. Most merciful and compassionate God, share with us thy great goodness, teach us thy loving forgiveness. Raise us above the distinctions and differences which divide us. Send us the peace of thy divine spirit to unite us in all thy perfect being. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. We have two kinds of crowds. We have the seated crowd and the wall crowd. And today we, we pretty much have a balance of both. So this is kind of neat. Usually one is bigger than the other, but today we're kind of balanced out. So Howard has some nice proclamation, well, presentations. No proclamations. No proclamations. Wow. Um, Tom, is there anybody on the street? Yes, sir. Okay. There, there, <laughs> there was a traffic jam this morning on Harvey Street. Sorry. I got caught up in it. Uh, anyways, we have two uh, service awards. So let's start with the one who's been here with the longest, Mr. Do the Right Thing himself, uh, Tony Pribble. Come on up. Fifteen years. Got to take a picture. For those, you, for those of you guys in the room that don't know me, I'm Captain Tom Lewis. Um, Butch couldn't be here. He's actually away in Orlando, so I get the opportunity to recognize Tony. For those of you that don't know Tony, which I'm sure most of you do if you do the right thing, he started law enforcement career in the Department of Corrections. We actually worked together out of CCI back in 1995. In 99, he got hired here at the police department as an officer. 2001, he made officer of the year. He worked four years as a detective, six as a school resource officer, which he currently works at Punta Gorda Middle. Uh, he's won an absolutely uh, ton of awards, one of them of most importance, I think, he saved the life of an infant out at the Pines um, a couple years ago by doing CPR. And if you guys don't know, he's actually one of our long-standing CPR instructors. Uh, he is currently married and has one boy, Matthew. So Tony, it's a pleasure to recognize you, bro. How long is this going to Okay. <laughs> no, I just uh, want to say thank you. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege for the past 15 years to work for the city. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come serve this fine community. Um, thank you to uh, my mentor, Joe King. Um, yeah, I still <laughs> succeeded. It's amazing. Love you, man. Uh, everybody here, thank you for being here. It's awesome. And we have a, a 10 year service award for one of our, one of the stable voices in our dispatch center, Cindy Proud. Come on up. Cindy is one of our dispatchers, um, probably some of the most unrecognized folks. You don't see them out on the street every day, um, but they're working just as hard in the background. Uh, Cindy actually started with us, um, obviously, 10 years ago. 
She's been one of our communications training officers for the last seven. So any new dispatchers that we bring in, uh, Cindy is responsible to make sure that they're up to snuff. Um, she's been a jammers coach for the last six years, and she also teaches our women's self-defense classes. And aside from that, last year she was the winner of our Exceptional Team Performance of the Year Award. Nice. Cindy. I just want to thank um, everyone for the opportunity for the last 10 years to work for the city. I'm very grateful for that, and I love everybody I work with. They're great. If you would like to um, introduce yourself for a board or committee, if your name is submitted for one of those committees for the city, if you'd like to come forward and introduce yourself, now would be the time. Any board or committee nominees? Seeing none, we will recess the city council meeting and begin the CRA meeting shortly. They're quiet this morning. We haven't had enough coffee yet. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's empty now. <laughs> oh, it looks empty. I know. We need some plants. We need back some there. artwork. <laughs> yeah, they took down the Arbor Day poster. Yeah. See, that was sure, up there. what was there. It looked nice in here. We could have art in public places. Yeah, that would be good. good morning. Okay, good morning. I would like to call the CRA meeting to order and let the record reflect all CRA members are present. And the first item of business is citizens comments on CRA agenda items only, which would be the project status report, approval of the minutes and invoice from iCard Merrill and the lease agreement for Lashley Marina Ship Store. If anybody would like to comment on those items, please come to the podium, state your name, you have three minutes. Seeing no citizens comments on CRA agenda items only, we will move into the CRA project status report. Howard Kunick, CRA director. Marina is still doing quite well. Um, they are fully booked for the July 4th. Um, and they're, they're doing quite well. And the community room had 19 bookings in June, so that's uh, well, they did well. Howard, how many, how many liverboards are we having in that marina now? Do I don't have? know. Well, we can get you that answer. There are some. I, I don't know. You want us to start breaking out the number of liverboards? That would be nice. I was just yes. curious. Yeah, I'd like to, like to yes, know that. that would be so nice. We can do that. We can add a little. Mikhail probably already has it broken out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right after this weekend, next week, the contractor DM construction hopefully will begin with the um, Bermuda grass. And the seawall is done. If you've been by there lately, it's all cleaned up now. Arbor Walk open. Community parks moving along. We were asked to bring a, a uh, site plan of what the community park is going to look like. We haven't done it in a while. We had one previously. Karen? Is this the final yeah. site plan? Uh, basically what you have is in this general vicinity is the sitting area uh, with the sitting wall. There's an exercise trail with entry features, uh, an exercise equipment area for later, and just retention and general landscaping. So which, which is this Virginia on the left? Yes, on okay. the left. <laughs> okay. Any questions about the site plan? David, where is the, could you just point to the retention area? It's, it's not clear on oh it's on the outside yes oh okay what is the two different colors that you have you have a darker is that the grass the darker area will be the 
uh, exercise equipment area. Is that in future? Okay. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. I see, a, I see another rotary project coming in. The <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of, I'm sorry, what kind of trees are we, are we planting for this area? <coughs> Just curious. Anticipating uh, a type of palm tree uh, and probably some shady lady. Okay. Very nice. Well, uh, the Harbor Walk East, what you're looking at now is Harbor Walk East. That pathway is open, although it hasn't been fully paved yet. Um, and they still have to pave Mar uh, by the Clean Up Mary Street. And they also have to pave by the uh, hair salon booth but they finished the uh, interlocker pavers that's all completed and Gilchrist Park now is uh, you can't quite see it there uh, but as of today that's all done uh, there's some sod that has to be put in but all the paving is done the harbor walk is open the parking is back together again and now they um, they're on Harvey Street connecting uh, from Durance to Harvey. So we're still looking at the end of July. Tom? Harvey, um, Howard, what's happening with the, with the mangrove um, restoration project in the East Harbor Walk? How far along is that? I haven't been over there. Well, uh, Swift Mud's going to come back, and, um, and DEP will all make a ruling afterwards, after everything is all said and done. Howard, since we're going to be on recess at the end of July, can, if, if they're not completed, can you update that in the weekly as far as completion dates, if sure. they do get further behind than what they are now? Yeah. So we're all aware. Yeah. Thank you. It's hard to miss. Yes, it, it is. <laughs> I was stuck in the traffic jam this morning on Harvey Street. It's everywhere. <laughs> The, uh, some of my neighbors are now referring to our, our neighborhood as the ranchettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people parked all over. Mm. The dogs like it because they can run around in the mud. I know. <laughs> uh, Harbor Walk West. We still haven't heard back on the contract, the final. And Veterans Park. Uh, Carolyn had a question. Excuse me, on Howard. Um, how often? Um, I mean, how long does it usually take for FDOT to get back to us? There's no designated time. However, we would hope within the next month that okay. we would. Thank you. And the Veterans Park uh, committee still is working on uh, raising the funds, and we've got the brick area design. You want to see the brick area? Yes. Please. Thank yes. you. Karen. Poor Karen. Back and forth. Back and forth. What's out of focus or something? Basically what you're looking at, this is Nesbitt. This is the pond area. The sidewalk in between these four areas or what's designated for the brick. So those are bricks that they're selling to support the project, Tom, or what are the bricks? No, those bricks are not to support the project. Not for this, the project, Joan LeBeau Urban Design. Um, those are the areas where the new bricks will be placed as the Kalanis group continues to sell. All the groups continue to sell. Um, the area that they're placed in now, there was some concern about how it looked. So we're trying to update it, and this will allow, as the area fills in, we can move it through the entire walkway. We don't have to limit it to one section, and it will have a, um, it will blend in with the area. We'll just do a little uh, 10 by 10 section. It'll be pre already bricked, so it won't look unfinished. And then as the bricks are sold, we'll replace them, um, pull them out just like they do for the area at Lashley Park. Okay. Tom. <clears throat> 
the vets are, are currently up to just shy of fifty thousand dollars towards the eighty thousand dollar purchase of the granite so uh, it's coming along wow. nickels and dimes at a time but it's coming along nice I got, I got a thought i don't know uh, hard uh one of your emails to us said that the uh uh, evaluation for CRA is up slightly. Would it be appropriate that uh, we took that extra money and designated it for the um, veterans part? We cannot, we unless, cannot. unless the county commission approves it, because that is a new project. New project. It's not like uh, fixing up something that's broken at Lashley Park. That's an existing project. That would be new. We can always ask the county commission, but we really can't because we made an agreement that we wouldn't do anything new unless the commissioners approved it. Carolyn? Uh, isn't that because those any funds that come in are going to be used to offset the, uh, the loan? Yes. So we're paying down the debt? Yes. Well, the idea is if we get more money in over time, the debt can be retired earlier and the CRA can sunset Absolutely. earlier. That was the commitment. That's not to say the county commission wouldn't approve it, but we have to go and ask. Mm -hmm. Tom? I absolutely uh, support and like uh, Frank's idea, and if we're all of the same mind, I would, I would like to see us pursue that. If I certainly would. We could certainly ask. If we have consensus here, we could ask at the I next joint that. meeting, or how would we handle that? Would it have to be a joint meeting topic, or could we just submit it to the county for them to discuss at one of their meetings? And I dare him to turn down a veterans project. <laughs> I can. I see uh, where you're going what is with it this. that? Uh -huh. I, I can certainly start the pro the uh, process started. What is it that we're going to be asking them? We need some kind of value. I would say some kind of monetary value that we're willing to. Why don't you um, work up some numbers as far as what you know the increase was and what we may have to work with? And. This is for the whole Veterans Park area or just the bricks? I would for the, just the extra money. How much would it uh, for the whole project? For the whole project. For the for, for the, the wall. What for the wall, including the wall? Especially the wall. Yes. Okay. Then we'll need to work something up. We'll have it available. I do feel we have an obligation to retire the debt. I, I think the veterans project is really noble and it's great. And I'm totally supportive of it and have contributed to it. But I think we have an obligation to retire the debt. And um, that was the first obligation that we have. And so I think unless, unless the, the um, evaluation is up significantly, where we really feel like, gee, we're retiring the debt, we're on track, and we've got extra funds left over, then I think we would, it would be um, a great thing to do. <coughs> but my first feeling is we have to continue with well, the are, are the rest of us in consensus with yeah. having Howard work up some kind of figure that we would present to the county? Yes. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to see some. We numbers. can actually talk about this again in the August meeting. It's I not think, like we're I in a think rush. that we can talk about it, but I, uh, I have no idea what the county commission is going to tell us. But uh, it certainly doesn't hurt to go ahead and ask. Well, I can have we can we can have information for you for August 13th when you come back for the CRA because there are some other um, capital projects at Lashley that we may need to undertake, but we don't need county commission approval for that because that's an existing project. I just feel like this veterans project is a county, even though it's in Punta Gorda, it is a county project. Yes, is. So, I mean, yes. I'm very willing to ask once we and the nail down what coming. our request is. Yes. The money's coming from all over the county. It's not just Punta Gorda. The city has agreed to contribute in, in like, in, in, in kind. kind. Yes. Perhaps we could put a value on that. I know that Mark is advancing on the engineering and we'll know the quantities of material and we're getting closer to the cost. Perhaps we could evaluate what the city's contribution would be and then maybe approach the county with that kind of a, a, a number in mind. I don't know where the numbers would turn out to be and if that's appropriate, but that may be a place to start. With putting a limit on it? Sorry? With putting a limit on the amount that would be Well, I, I'm not sure what the, what the count, what the city's in-kind value is at this point. I think mm -hmm. we need to maybe know what that is. We, we can come up with an in-kind, like for instance, our city engineer is doing, uh, as part of a normal job, mm -hmm. uh, doing uh, some engineering, inside engineering design, 
But you can put a value to that. Yeah. Okay. Kim? I, I would, now that you've mentioned that there's more work that needs to be done at Lashley, I think that we should look at, at those kind of things, what needs to be done at Lashley, and if there's other CRA <coughs> type of funds that we're going to need, it would be nice to know that when we're making a decision to right. do this on the 13th. Yeah. Yes. We'll have it. Okay. I do have a question about the, the paver area. Is that moving some of the pavers from their existing location to into these areas so that it cleans that whole area up around the gazebo? Eventually, zone? that's our plan. Okay. Great. We would like to do that. <clears throat> now the fitness equipment. We even have a name for it at the end. Um, because we Home didn't Depot have to have a contest. Has <laughs> we didn't have to have a naming contest. You just came up with one on your own. We just named it. Okay, good. Good uh, job. Like good job. <laughs> Empowerment. We have no authority. We just named it anyway. <laughs> uh, well, you can approve it today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Home Depot, since Home Depot stepped up to the plate, we were able to go to a different vendor who was under contract, uh, state contract, <clears throat> Greenfields. And for the public, you'll see that it's an upgraded uh, equipment <coughs> than what we would have been able to do before. And it's also ADA accessible. That's great. Nice. You can Very see some nice. of the various types of machines that we're going to have. And they are on order. That one's a cool one on That's the right. That's very Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. These look much more interesting than, oh, than the static, oh, yes. It's called the fitness zone. All right. And that's the sign that Urban Design uh, designed. That's what they do, they design. <laughs> Are we okay with the name fitness zone? Nice. They're going to have signs there that explain how to use the equipment. Yes, then. Greenfields has this. The Make it sign. very easy to understand. Mm -hmm. That's the site plan. We think that's the site plan, but we're going to have Home Depot out there, and uh, so that's we nice. hope to have. We say late August. That's terrific. Um, we hope to have it on. You know, whenever when we come back to council August 13th, hopefully we'll be able to have a uh, PowerPoint that shows it's installed. If all goes well. Right. Very nice. It'll be too hot to use it until. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do think we should have a ribbon cutting or something when it's yes. dry. Yes, I agree. <laughs> we all get out there and use it. We'll have a fitness class. Okay, that's it. Any questions for Howard? No. Okay, next we have approval of the minutes. Approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have an invoice from iCard Merrill. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the invoice from iCard Merrill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Carried unanimously. And next we have the lease agreement for the Lashley Marina Ship Store. Our finance uh, staff met with the uh, proprietor of the ship store. They worked out a lease. Um, the Proprietor is here um, to discuss or answer any questions you may have on the lease. Again, it's the first two years, uh, $1,200 per month, uh, payable in advance. And then the rent goes to $1,500 per month for the next two years with a 3% inflator after the first four-year period. The proprietor um, requested that the 3% inflator not be included but we, staff recommends having it in there. So if you have any questions of the proprietor, I guess she's here to answer any questions. Okay. The proprietor is Sue Leahy and her daughter. Um, Sue, you might get up because there was a question. You would, she has requested the use of the patio area waterward for display of her goods and, and it's not, 
I didn't have the authority to approve it, and so we're asking if CRA, uh, we've, we've allowed it in the past. She has agreed to remove all, these, all the stuff that she's put out there every night, and she also has agreed not to block any pathways. And I didn't have a problem with it, but I just wanted the CRA to discuss it and okay it. She had another question about payment and uh, a monthly payment. We'll go prepay for the first, I think it's four years, and then after that it's going to be, you would ask for no, monthly, two years. Two prepay years. two years and then monthly is her request, and, and we've discussed that, and that's all been fixed. And it's in, the, in her email that I sent. She had two things. We fixed the first thing. The second was the approval on using the Waterward patio area. Dave Drury for the record. Thank you. I mean, I think it's consistent with other businesses. We allow them to have outdoor displays downtown as long as they bring the stuff in in the evening time, yes. as long as you we, know, the access no is problem. not blocked. Just a question. Uh, when you say water ward uh, area, is this where we currently have, where the current light preservers are on, yeah. on yes. display? Yeah, they're, they're, they're out there on display. Okay. She's Same also, area. Oh, She's also going to go to Team Punagorda and offer her services as far as the bike loaner program. Nice. And they, uh, I think Rusty wouldn't mind that one bit. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Sue Leahy. Uh, Sue right. Leahy, correct? Yes. yes. I'd move approval with the stipulations that uh, was put forth by the staff. Good. Thank you. Which is already in the... In the, the lease, lease uh, in the that lease. isn't discussed in the lease, no, but everything 3%, else is. I believe. That's all in the lease, yeah. and that's no, all I'm written talking in. talking about the approval of putting the stuff out. Oh, and okay. And that, it that's back. fair. It's not in the lease, but that's fair, and we just agree to she it. She agrees with the stipulations. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. You care that with it, Sue? Yeah, absolutely. All right, good. Thank you. Welcome. I, We're yes, delighted. and I think Thanks. people will see that you're there. and Yeah, sort of because create. it's kind of like vacant down at that end, so. And people have been in and out, and now you're going to be in, which is a good thing. Letting people know in the community that you're there. Yeah. Absolutely. As I understand it, you're going to also have tournaments and. and in the future, we're going to get in there, get established, and that's our plan is to have tournaments and community stuff uh, geared towards the kids mainly. Well, that's wonderful. Oh, you know, to bring them in, more good. involvement. Oh, that's very good. So we have a motion. Second. And a second to <laughs> approve the lease with the other stipulations that were just discussed about the outdoor usage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Good and we, luck. We, we know, she, good luck. We know she's going to last longer than Shorty did. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Okay, next we have citizens comments. Citizens comments, please come to the podium. State your name, you have three minutes, and please abide by the rules of conduct. Any citizens comments? Okay, next we will move into commissioner comments. Nancy. Uh, I don't have any other than just to congratulate um, Mr. Hilston on his recent marriage. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Kim? Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to the re-elected city council people. It's been a pleasure working with you. Yes. Thank you. And, um, keeping the uh, attorney's fees to a half hour, that's all I got to say. <laughs> I have none. Jane. I just wish you all a very safe and happy 4th of July. Thank you. I, I would just like to say I, I appreciate Nancy's concern about retiring the debt for the CRA, but I also think that the the CRA will improve in value with the addition of mm -hmm. the Veterans Memorial, and I think that we need to consider that as well. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I agree. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm just so pleased that the CRA uh, valuation is up. <laughs> <laughs> First time in a, in a while, so right. that, that's been excellent. Been a long time. <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully we will use it wisely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And congratulations. Okay, we are adjourned. Have a nice vacation. Do you have want a break? Yes, have a good Fourth of July. Do you want a break? Are you okay? I'm okay. Okay. Is everybody okay? Moving on. Yeah. Okay. Funny. Okay, that one. Yeah. Okay. Even one that was
attorney doesn't do anything, he still gets it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are back in session and we are into the public hearing portion of the agenda. And first under public hearings, we have a resolution. Sorry, rushing you. Okay. <clears throat> This is a resolution, which I'll read by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, approving an amendment to the 2013 Community Development Block Grant Action Plan for the City of Punta Gorda and authorizing the City Manager to sign and submit all documents required by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and provide an effective date. This is a public hearing. Okay, um, any? Not this one, the next one. Okay. Any comments on this resolution before we open the public hearing? Nope. Okay, this is a public hearing. If you would like to speak on this resolution, please come to the podium, state your name. You have three minutes. This is a public hearing. Anybody wanting to speak on this resolution, please come forward. Move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion on second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Move approval of the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a couple seconds to <laughs> approve the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Next, we have another re resolution. Yes, this is a resolution which I'll read by title only. Resolution of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, approving the 2014 Community Development Block Grant Action Plan with the City of Punta Gorda and authorizing the city manager to sign and submit all documents required by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and provide an effective date. Any questions or comments? Howard, do you want to speak now? Yeah. Um, before you want to have it put up on the screen? Before we open up the public hearing, the, uh, the amount that we anticipate getting for the 2014 CDBG is uh, seventy five thousand dollars seventy five oh one one instead of sixty eight thousand so with that we have increased uh, the amounts for the four projects that we have in our action plan as shown which would be the Cooper Street the new image project the financial workshop it says workshop but workshop where is that taking place where's the financial workshop taking place <coughs> We're doing it uh, in conjunction with the Blanchard House uh, Museum. Or nice. Thank you. <laughs> and then they added into the community park. Any questions? Nope. No. Okay, this is a public hearing. If you would like to speak on this resolution of the CDBG funds, please come forward. This is a resolution for the city. If you have any public comments, please come forward. This is the last call if you have any public comment on this resolution. Move to close public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close this public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Move approval of the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have a second reading of an ordinance. Yes, this is AX-01-14. Um, this is the second reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. And after I complete uh, reading the title, I have a brief um, uh, comment that I'd like for your consideration. Um, this is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, annexing within the corporate area of the City of Punta Gorda, 204.97 acres, being a portion of South Highlands, according to the map or plat thereof, as recorded in Plat Book 2, page 6, Public Records of Charlotte County, Florida. Together with sections 21 and 28, Township 41 South, Range 23 East, being more particularly described in the boundary survey attached hereto as Exhibit A, in accordance with the annexation provisions of Chapter 171, Part 2, Florida Statutes. Redefining the boundary lines of said city in a conformance therewith, amending the official boundary map of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, providing that existing land use and zoning designations remain until changed by city ordinance providing for acceptance of dedications, providing direction for the city clerk, providing for conflict and severability, and providing an effective date. Um, it is that last uh, provision, providing an effective date, that I'd like to address my comments to. 
as, uh, as you know, at the last public hearing, we adopted, we um, uh, considered the first reading of an ordinance to amend the comprehensive plan as required by um, uh, the Florida statutes. And what I would like to do is uh, modify uh, that um, provision in the ordinance regarding the effective date to read as follows. This ordinance shall take effect upon the amendment of the city's comprehensive plan as provided by chapter 171 part two Florida statutes. So that the appropriate ordin uh, ordinances adopt uh, amending the comprehensive plan as provided for in the uh, statute be in place before the second reading, uh, uh, excuse me, before the ordinance becomes effective. Okay. This, it's okay to go forward with the second reading today, but we'll postpone the effective date until those uh, uh, comprehend amendments have been adopted what what kind of time frame are, are, we, are we talking the about? Um, um, second reading of the comprehensive plan ordinance that was considered last time is in September um, go ahead, Joan yeah. September 17th and Joan for the record and there may be a uh, there may be a second ordinance for your consideration also regarding comprehensive plan, plan amendment that would be adopted uh, at that same time and would you mind going over the reasons for these revisions once again I'm not sure I yeah the, the, the this, comp plan revision the Florida statutes that we're op operating under has a couple of provisions relating to the comprehensive plan and um, there's a there's it, it appears as far as timing is concerned that the comprehensive plan amendments take place before I the ordin before the annexation takes place so okay. we're jumping in the gun just a little bit okay. but, but I think it's okay to adopt the ordinance today just simply making the annexation contingent uh, effective upon completing the uh, uh, comprehensive plan amendments. I'm fine. Thank and you. I believe the comprehensive plan amendments have a longer time frame for between the hearings. So that's why we need to wait until the time frame has expired so we can hear the next portion of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions before we open the public hearing? This is a public hearing on AX01-14. If you'd like to comment on AX01-14, please come to the podium, state your name. You have three minutes. AX01-14. Seeing, seeing, no, seeing no one. Move to close the public hearing. <laughs> okay. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on AX01-14. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And now we need a motion move with a, the move approval AX uh, 0114 with, with the amended, with the amended um, effective date effective date. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve AX 01-14 with the changes of the, with the effective date clause. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay. We have no quasi judicial hearings and next we'll move into ordinance and resolutions which um, no public hearing required, but we will have citizens' comments before those three items. So if you have any comments on these three items, uh, temporary parking, vending and amusement machines, and um, traffic and parking areas on Olympia, now would be the time to comment on those three, one of those three items. Please come to the podium. Seeing no citizens' comments on the ordinance resolution portion, we will move to GA 04-14. This is the second reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending Chapter 23, Traffic, Article 2, Parking Areas, Section 23-13, Parking in Lashley Park and Ponce de Leon Park, Subsection B, Punta Gorda Code, to allow for temporary parking by marina customers, providing for direct conflict and severability and providing an effective date. This has been previously discussed about the temporary parking by the marina building. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve GA 04-14. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have GA 07-14. This is the second reading of an ordinance, which will read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending Chapter 12, Business Tax Act. Section 12-17, Vending and Amusement Machines, Punta Gorda Code, to clarify the local business tax rate for vending and amusement machines and to reduce the rate levied per machine, providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Again, this is a second reading. Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve GA 07-14. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have GA08-14. Yes, finally, this is the second reading of an ordinance, which will read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending Chapter 23, Traffic, Article 2, Parking Areas, Section 23-17E, Punta Gorda Code, limiting on-street parking on Olympia Avenue between Cross Street, US 41, and Sullivan Street, providing for conflicts and severability and providing an effective date. And this is the change the parking yes move approval of ga0814 second we have a motion a second to approve ga08-14 all in favor aye. aye opposed carried unanimously okay next we have the consent agenda and before we move into citizens comments does anybody have any items to pull from the consent agenda no. none no. no thank you okay now we will move into citizens comments on consent agenda items only which is the approval of the minutes, the invo two invoices, monthly litigation report, um, an occupation of easement, and the state plan of operation with the police department. Move approval of consent agenda. Second. I didn't see any citizens' comments. Oh. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, next we have the regular agenda. And the first item is citizens' comments on regular agenda items only, which would be the budget status update, discussion of banners on polls, discussion of off-premise signs for special events, I-75 signage suggestion. If you'd like to comment on any of those items, now would be the time. You could come to the podium, please, and state your name. Okay, seeing no citizens' comments, this is where the meeting. Oh, we could. We could go into new business. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with conducting the new business and then going back, back to the budget, budget. for the presentation? Sure, sure. sure. Yes? Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Leave the best for last. <laughs> we're not, we're not holding yet. Okay, so we are gonna, we have no unfinished business. So now we will move into new business, and the first item is discussion regarding banners on polls on private property. Good morning for the record, Terry Tebb, zoning official. Um, this came up when um, we've noticed on the uh, hospital property that they have uh, various banners on their light poles um, pretty much throughout their property, and it was uh, totally limited to the hospital property. Uh, not too long ago, one of the code officers did notice that uh, another uh, location, actually uh, Case Ponder, had put up a pole with a banner on it. And I had also noticed that uh, the public shopping centers have banner arms. There's no banners on them at this time. Uh, it's possible they're only used at for holiday banners or something. I'm not positive on that. Um, but the uh, code specifically prohibits banners uh, in general. And uh, so that kind of created a conflict. Uh, staff has no objections to, uh, you know, the banners, especially in the medical overlay district. Um, but we would need to provide for uh, permitting them. Kim? Um, I like the banners. I, and you know the Swiss Connection, they have banners there, and I know that was approved at one, at one point. As long as they don't look shabby, I mean, I'm just giving my opinion about banners. If you go to other cities, and I know, I think we can have banners on our light poles downtown. It's such a great way to advertise events that you're having. Like if Patty were having something at Fisherman's Village, she could perhaps have her own banners that she put up during Pirate Fest or whatever and would take down, you You know, I don't know how that would work using putting banners on city property or whatever if we'd have to use our people or if you could pay to do it. But, I mean, it's a very attractive way to do it as opposed to having all these signs all over all the time. I don't know if you've seen it before in other cities where they have these banners on all the light poles or they may have a banner hanging across or whatever. As long as they're kept nice mm -hmm. and clean and not tattered. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the record, the uh, types of 
banners uh, that uh, the Swiss <coughs> Connection has. There's several in the downtown area um, that have the, uh, essentially it's an open banner or business banner. Those, there is a provision in the code that is very specific about where that must be located, the size that it must be maintained, um, and it you know has to be close to the door, can't be above the height of the building. So there are specific re regulations for those so that um, they do stay under control. They've all been maintained very nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, they look great, but that is a different provision than the ones that would be on the poles. Uh, there used to be a provision that allowed for banners on the city light poles, especially for events. However, after the hurricane, the new light poles didn't have banner arms. Oh, they And don't. so oh, it, okay. for the most part, we don't have that many with uh, banner arms, so that did get removed. Oh, okay. I, I'd like to just chime in real quick, and then we'll go to Nancy. It's not that I think what the, what the um, hospital did was unsightly at all, but I just feel like if we start allowing this, that's one more thing we have to police. It's one more thing we have to decide what size, what kind, you know, how many square feet. We're going to delve into all those specific details that we've done for signage because I know there's other, not just the medical overlay, there's other businesses in the downtown area that want flags and want banners and they want balloons and they want flutter flags and they want they want it all, and if they see that we're allowing the hospital to have it, then I feel like it creates kind of a conflict for our other businesses in the downtown when we tell them they can't have it. So I'm more inclined to say I like what they did, but unfortunately I think it would, if we just allowed it in the medical overlay, I don't think it's, it, it, it is appropriate. So that's where I'm at. Nancy? <clears throat> I'm kind of like Kim. I think that they look festive. I do know that Team Punagorda did try to put banners in along Olympia and Marion um, a couple of years ago. And FDOT said that they couldn't put the banners on because the light poles, it had to do with where the light poles were and it was the state road and the distance to the road. And you know, I, um. even though I go to other cities and I see banners in their downtown, I go, why can't we? But FDOT had very specific reasons why we couldn't um, and I know that's that was true for the 125th we were going to do flags mm -hmm. and the same provision applied for a flag because there are flag brackets there but it, it really doesn't matter what kind of flag it is that FDOT just doesn't want the flags on the state roads they said it's a distraction to the driving and whatever so it's like okay um, but I think as long as as banners are um, tasteful we, I know we can't we can't edit what the language is that's on these. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you've taught us well. Um, and I, know, I do agree with you, Rachel, that we would have to limit the size because all of a sudden now we could start to have banners and, and we know that you know you give an inch and people will take a mile. So, um, but I do, the reaction that I've received from some residents that I asked, they really like the banners. Well, the other, the other um, situation is the one that you should the other one that you've shown mm -hmm. it looks like the pole was set intentionally for the banner it's not that the banner was attached to a light pole they've constructed this pole to hold this banner so if I mean we we need to know that that's the type of situation that we're going to get if we were to move forward with something like this that, that, Tom? that particularly looks like a flagpole that they just mm -hmm. secured a banner to but mm -hmm. it, my, my, con my concern is that if you, if you go back to the one you just had before about the, the, the hospital there, I, I believe that that, was, that is an attempt to advertise that the, the hospital is under new ownership and they want to bring it to everybody's attention. Uh, but if you look at that, you, all of these banners over time, as Kim suggested, they're going to deteriorate with the sun and so on like that. Mm -hmm. I, for a, I think that perhaps for a time period, if a new business opens, and they want to advertise, I don't know what the right amount of time is, six months or something like that. If they want to put a banner up to draw attention, as Bayfront has done to draw attention to their new facility, I would be okay with that. But over time, these banners are going to deteriorate. deteriorate. So uh, I, I'm inclined to uh, be okay with it for a time period, for a new business, for an event, for a change of ownership under certain conditions that we could we could control it and uh, so they wouldn't Carolyn our current um, regulations with regards to those that are on 
our buildings downtown maintained that they have to be maintained. Yes. And they have to look good. They mm -hmm. can't be tattered. So, I mean, I think if we institute those same kinds of restrictions on any of things, even like here at the hospital. Um, when this came up, I had to go by the hospital and really look. I hadn't seen them before. Because I think unless you're on uh, hospital property, you don't even notice these from the road. There were no banners on the roadside to indicate that this is the hospital and this is you know, the bayfront, et cetera. So I don't have a, a problem with that at the hospital. I guess my main problem would be that we do it for one and we don't allow others to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad to know that we obviously have other banners in yeah. town where people, if they wish to do it, can do that. Um, I would hate to us to have to have each building or each owner come forward to us and ask us for a banner. Uh, I'm not sure whether the short time is agreeable. I mean, during holiday season, we want to see more things that are festive. I'm really a bit ambivalent right now with regards to this. Terry, uh, piggybacking off of what Tom said, there, there is special event banner permit. We do have that. Maybe there's some way that we could incorporate this type of banner into that is there any way that we could possibly do that because they do get but new businesses do get opportunities to put up now open change of ownership they do get that opportunity with the special event permit and they can only do it certain how many times a year for a grand opening for a new business mm -hmm. it's um, a banner not to exceed 32 square feet in area so it wouldn't really allow for multiple banners. A grand opening permit is good for up to 60 days, which also they could also have uh, a promotion outside where they had like one of the radio stations come in and do a promotion. They could do uh, several things associated with a, a grand opening uh, permit. Many times the new businesses don't have the permanent signage yet, so it's important for them to have that temporary signage for a time period to draw the attention to them. The other business events would probably be too short in duration to be worthwhile, all of the work it would take to put this type of a banner up because these are high, so it's, it takes the equipment, somebody to, mm -hmm. you know, to go up and change them out. Um, so my inclination would be if we're going to allow them that it be something that doesn't require the business owner to put them up, take them down, put them up, and take them down, because that would be pretty labor intensive. I, if um, I could, I, I would just not like to see the banners on a permanent basis. They are sure to start to look shabby over a time period. And back to what I said before, for a specific time period to advertise a new business, I, I would be okay with that aspect. And we already have that, right? Not this style. Not this no, style. not this style. but. But I think to Terry's point, though, that uh, I would hate to create more work. Right. So if this ordinance was to allow for this, and we use the same language that we did with the business banners, so that, um, as you described, uh, we haven't seemed to have, have an issue with those. We haven't had an issue with the uh, business banners. Uh, the businesses have been great. Um, my hat's off to them. They do a, a, a great job. They're very creative with them. How is this different, then, than the business banners? The business banners cannot exceed five square feet in area, and these are much larger than that. They also must be located either attached to the building or within five feet of the entrance of the building, and it's so this. But that would be more reflective of downtown rather than in a large parking lot such as the hospital, the hospital. or Publix or something like that. Yeah, that, that regulation is citywide. Um, there have been some businesses um, along uh, the highway commercial district that have utilized them. It's not as apparent because downtown the traffic's slower, it's more pedestrian oriented. Um, but, you know, for these, I think it would take a specific regulation, uh, you know, whether you wanted to limit it to banners specifically on light poles, um, you know, of a specific size would be permitted, that they, you know, must be maintained, can't be faded torn or tattered um, I would think too they would need to be professionally manufactured because then we <laughs> oh, run yeah. into that again too mm -hmm. I just don't I mean I see what you're saying in this one particular instance they weren't adjacent directly to the road from what you said but in other places they will be so yeah. 
This isn't offensive at the hospital, but let's just imagine in our mind what it would be like if every doctor's office along that medical overlay district had these hanging up. I mean, it's, it's okay for the hospital and just have that one instance, but if they were everywhere, mm -hmm. it would mm -hmm. not look right. Nancy. Well, and I know that um, our auto dealerships in town would love to have, be able to have flutter flags and all kinds of things on their property, so I can just envision the parking lots of the Well, that's what I was getting to, is that I just don't feel like if we do it for medical overlay that it's really fair. Right. Because we've made them take stuff down that is not dissimilar, I mean somewhat, but not totally dissimilar from what you see here. Mm -hmm. So, and they've been compliant, so I just, I'm not in favor of it. I agree. I agree. Okay, we have. Yeah. So, we're going to inform the hospital they need to take them down? Could they, could we somehow <laughs> <laughs> allow them to have this as their, their grand opening? Could for 60 days. A, yes, could we allow it just for temporary use since they've already, as part of their change of ownership, is that possible? No. Okay. <laughs> could we do a special event? Could, could we do a special event? Just special, you know, it's a... It really doesn't we do? fall into the parameters of a special event. Um, I mean, at this point, we are doing uh, drafting an ordinance uh, specific to the medical overlay as to the directional signs. Um, you know, that particular ordinance is specific. But the medical overlay, as you said, is larger than just the hospital campus. The, um, how, how long has, have the signs been up? Oh. Uh, these pictures were taken on May 30th, and they had been up a while. Yeah, they've been up for a while. Yeah. Um, the way we would enforce the violation of code, like any other violation, would be to give them notice um, of a violation in a certain period of time to come into compliance. If you wanted to recommend through the city manager that um, they be given 30, 60, whatever days to come into compliance, uh, that would be appropriate. I'm okay with 60 days. I'm okay with 60 days. That's wrong. Everybody. And the uh, funeral home as well. Both, mm -hmm. both instances. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Discussion regarding.